As you go through the entry process, what's, what you see out the windows is, is very, very dramatic. You're hitting the low density air at the top, upper reaches of the atmosphere at a tremendous speed, and you're making those molecules glow. The color of the glow and the, how brightly it depends on the speed that you're hitting them and what the density is out there. You don't feel much buffeting or anything like that, but you're very, very aware that you know, just, just under you it's 2,700 degrees. One of the most difficult scenarios that we run into in space exploration is the re-entry physics. This is where the vehicle is returning through the Earth's atmosphere to get down to the ground. You have to have a thermal protection system, uh, or TPS, materials that protect the vehicle from those extreme temperatures. We test these materials in ground facilities that could simulate those high heating conditions but ground test facilities aren't enough. A much more recent tool is to computationally simulate uh, these extreme environments. The new tool that we're using today to simulate these extreme environments is called Deepler, or Data Parallel Line Relaxation. What we use Deepler for is, is designing this heat shield that, that protects the spacecraft, that keeps it from burning up. We need to to do analysis because there's just no place on Earth where we can do that test. Subsequent to the Columbia accident, we embarked on a very vigorous activity to uh, establish the Deepler code as a capability that could be run real time during flights in case there were problems with the thermal protection system. During the flight of the STS-114, we saw a gap filler protruding from the heat shield of the shuttle. We immediately realized that there was a possibility that that gap filler could cause increased heating to the TPS system. We were really in a test mode of our analysis tools at that point, and that all switched around once we realized that we actually had an anomaly that we had to address. It was an extremely high pressure situation, but at the same time, it was remarkable to see how quickly we could turn around calculations and how, how much confidence the entire team, the entire aerothermal team across the agency and also in academia who were brought together to look at this anomaly and see if it was a problem or not. The final recommendation was made to the shuttle program office in part with the Deepler calculations in hand to give high confidence to the fact that it did indeed pose a threat to the vehicle to leave the gap filler in place. We now use Deepler to predict the flow for the Orion spacecraft and help us design what TPS materials we'll select for that vehicle and details of the shape of the vehicle as well are set by our Deepler calculations. The strength is not in the code. It's a good tool, but it's really to highlight the expertise that we have within the agency, within the center, and how to manipulate that tool to generate the data that we need it. Mars Science Laboratory mission is a very large vehicle. It will be the largest aeroshell ever made by human beings when we fly it. When we enter the Martian atmosphere, the aerothermal environment creates challenges to our TPS. Deepler is one of our key tools to understanding that aerothermal environment. We use it to get our best estimate of the environments that the spacecraft sees and our thermal protection system material must endure. It's been essential in our development, in our understanding our risks. One of the key tools that I can use to understand the risk posture and communicate it are the insights that I get out of the deeper ones. One of the greatest challenges is figuring out how to take the humans and fly them safely through the atmosphere down to the surface. The air is so thin on Mars that the vehicles don't slow down to a point where you can light your engines below the speed of sound. That's a big problem, and how we might solve that is to use very large, potentially very large, heat shields or aeroshells, things that actually use the air pushes on to slow down. 
We've done this for robotic missions, but we've done it at a very small scale. And it's very hard to extrapolate those technical solutions to the large scale of human exploration, where we're basically talking about landing two-story houses on the surface of Mars, one right next to each other. The other challenge, of course, is coming back to Earth. Now, we, you can imagine we can put people in a space capsule as they arrive to Earth and directly land on Earth like we do coming back from the moon. Well, that's exactly the idea. However, you're coming back much faster. The heating rates are massively high. Even though the vehicle is quite a bit smaller than landing on Mars, it's still a huge problem. To get at these solutions, we need new design methods. We need new tools, new techniques to analyze the problems of flight through the Mars atmosphere. And Deepler is one solution that we've been searching for. Those challenges, those two extreme ends of, this, of the challenge, can both be assessed with this tool, the Deepler tool that was developed up at Ames. You could think about Deepler as the first major piece of reentry physics software that has been reused in real time. Deepler is a stepping stone, if you will. In future missions, it won't just be Deepler. It will be its follow-ons and its successors that will leverage that computational capability even more. This code is one of the key tools that's going to enable us to enter planetary atmospheres to both do science, to figure out whether there's life other places in the solar system. But more fundamentally, what we're all about at NASA is figuring out how to extend human presence in the solar system. The Deepler code is a major advancement. This is going to be the thing that's going to enable us to put people safely on Mars, people that will live and settle. This is really a major step forward in expanding human presence throughout the solar system.